Welcome to Western Massachusetts. Search for my favorite snake, the Eastern Hognose. The Eastern Hognose is a medium sized, stout snake exhibiting a wide range of coloration. The ones I have encountered here in Massachusetts are an olive brown or a dark gray, both with faded patterning. My favorite specimens have black and gold checkering with an olive brown background. Aptly named, the hog nose has this upturned snout resembling a pig's nose. In actuality, this is a modification of the snake's rostral scale, and it evolved to help the hog nose burrow through loose soil and forest litter, searching for its favorite prey, which are toads. Although eastern hognose snakes prey upon a variety of amphibians, morphologically they have evolved as toad specialists. So in addition to the spade-like rostral scale which aids in digging up toads, hognose snakes have small rear fangs that help puncture a ballooning toad. And what do I mean by this? Well first of all, as some of you are aware, toads are poisonous. But for the species of snakes that eat them, they have partial or full immunity to the poison. So in such cases, the toad's last ditch effort as a line of defense is to inflate themselves with air, making them more difficult to swallow. And after a hognose rear fangs puncture a ballooning toad, venom is injected to further subdue the unfortunate amphibian. Hognose venom is considered mild to humans and bites usually only occur in captive situations during feeding mishaps. Hognose snakes have a theatrical way of defending themselves against predators. More on this later. In Massachusetts, the eastern hognose inhabits some unique habitat. Sandy soils are an essential habitat characteristic for hognose snakes. Now this includes sandy woodlands, fields, farmland, and coastal areas. Specifically at the western Massachusetts site, it is defined as outwash pitch pine scrub oak barren natural community. Such a habitat is a unique ecological area and is important for many rare plants and animals here in Massachusetts. Now two animal species that I thoroughly enjoy encountering while searching for hog nose in such habitat is the eastern box turtle and the whippoorwill, both of which unfortunately have been declining throughout much of the northeast in recent years. It is worth noting that this pitch pine scrub oak community is dependent on fire for its long-term survival. Despite being in the heart of what I consider a decent sized eastern hognose population, they are still very difficult to find. But right now it's mid-June, which is nesting season for the eastern hognose. So despite being diurnal, female eastern hognose snakes nest in the evening. They begin by excavating a hole in sandy soil 10 to 15 centimeters deep before laying an average of about two dozen eggs. So despite their nesting behavior occurring in the evening, I have discovered that for several days before they do nest, they will hang out on the edges of a nesting site. Okay, this is the first nesting site we are going to check out. This one is the least reliable out of the other two we're going to check. But let's see if we get lucky. All right, no luck in and around the sand pit here. So I'm gonna look a little bit underneath this underbrush up here. See if anything's a little bit further back from the sand pit. Or other members of the population, males, non-gravid females, etc. How you like it in here? Huh. Something rarer than a hognose snake itself 
is finding their shed. This is a partial shed and that represents only the second hog nose snake shed I have ever found. All right, I've searched for about 30 minutes, no luck. So it is a short hike to the other nesting site, which is similar in appearance to this sand pit. Okay, so this is the beginning of the second sand pit. Also a reliable nesting spot for hognose. I'm gonna speed this up and stop it if we find something. All right, I just saw a northern black racer, but it went down this stump. I think it went either down that hole or that hole. Good size one. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I am going to set up a camera here on time lapse. And sure enough, after I left the area for a while, the racer resurfaced. Okay, just found this gorgeous, and it looks like a gravid hog nose here in Western Massachusetts. All right, she's starting to move a little bit. Are you going to put a show on for us? All right, pudding here, see that? Nice. And notice the two black, ah, we got some hissing now. So you see how she turns her head like this? These presumably are eye spots. So unlike a cobra that will face you for the threat, this snake turns to the side. You see like this, won't directly face they do not strike, but sometimes they feign a strike. See, so that was a feign strike. See that? Here are the feign strikes in slow motion, and you'll be able to see that the snake does not open its mouth. As mentioned earlier, hognose fangs are located in the rear of its mouth, so biting as a defense would be ineffective anyway. Thus evolved feigned striking behavior. It should be noted that some southern populations of eastern hognose are known to gape their mouths as part of the defense, and it is possible that they are mimicking cottonmouth's defensive strategy in the region. All right, finding that rabbit hognose was thrilling. What we're gonna do now is similar to the first sand pit, the first nesting site, is we're going to search some of this understory which borders the sand pit. And similar to the first sand pit, um, similar vegetation, it's, it's partially open here. Ample shade with pockets of sunlight. So a snake can choose a range of temperatures. I like it right here. And by that I mean it's relatively open that if one is exposed, I'm more likely to see it. All right, we have a relatively thick stand of bear oak or scrub oak. Um, I guess it's worth exploring, but it is, it is a little bit too thick to keep the camera on, otherwise it's going to get tangled up. So I'm gonna turn it off. Okay, I was just about to exit this thick underbrush because, well, it was annoying. Um, but I'm glad I didn't, or at least I'm glad that I took a few more steps here and turned to my right, because here is another hog nose.
All right, she took flight there a little bit, but here she is in the shade, relaxed, and this is another gravid female. In fact, it looks like she had just recently shed, which means she'll be laying eggs any day or even this evening. She's hooding a little bit, hissing just a little bit here. All right, so since she is worth it, I set up two cameras here, one on time lapse and actually one on slow motion. So we're gonna leave you be. I'll come back in a few minutes and I hope just the cameras remain. Okay, we are coming up to the edge of another nesting site. This particular spot has more open sand so the only vegetation where they could get some cover is right along the edge here. So this is where we're going to concentrate our search. Nice leaf litter right here. Oh, very nice. We got one. So we're going to leave her be. Which is difficult to not get a little bit closer to my favorite snake, but I don't want to stress out these pregnant snakes too much. All right, just captured this large northern black racer just a short distance, 40 feet from the gravid hog nose. Now this is a female and she is gravid herself. So initially I was concerned that she was potentially stalking the hog nose, but she is ready to lay eggs herself and is likely, and I have observed this in the past, she is likely on the edge of this sand pit getting ready to nest herself and is unlikely to have much of an appetite. All right, we are going to let you go, girl. She's a good size, close to four feet, pretty snake. So yeah, another defensive posture where she has her head kinked to the side like that, keeping an eye on me and trying to look a little bit more menacing. But once she's in the brush, she'll she'll flee quickly. Oh, oh here's a classic example, rattling their tail. All right, girl, illustrate why you are called the black racer. Well, the defensive, <laughs> there she goes. A couple strikes and there she goes. Okay, I've searched the remaining edge of this sand pit. Didn't find any more gravid hog nose. So we're gonna work our way into this thicker vegetation. Get some bare oak, red maple, birch, more sweet fern where it opens up here. Um, I haven't searched this actual parcel of land, whatever you wanna call it, in years. I forgot how good it looks. It's, it's relatively open, not thick understory. So if one is out on the crawl, it shouldn't be that difficult to find. This looks really good in here. It's nice and shaded too. Found one 30 feet from the sand dunes. I'm not sure this is a gravid female. It might be a male. No, there she goes, hissing. I think it's a male. Hooding. See it hooding?
Oh, oh my god. Oh, what is it doing? <laughs> so right now it's pretending that it's it's sick. You see it's defecating. Then it will eventually stop moving. Mouth agape, tongue will hang out. Oh, still gonna. So this is showing a potential predator that it is sick and diseased and that it's in the process of dying from something horrible. It'll even complete the act by hanging the, the tongue, lolling the tongue like that. And it is a male. Hopefully for the hog nose, the potential predator will not attempt to eat the now dead snake for fear, although this is based on instinct, it will contract whatever nasty disease the hog nose died from. When the snake feels that the threat has left the area, it will end its ruse, come back to life, and flee the area. Here is another, looks like gravid. She's hooding and hissing. She is a good size. I don't know how well you can see this, but these these swirly depressions right here looks like I, I you know I I can't confirm for sure, but it looks like she was searching for a nesting site by taking her rostral scale, you know, that the pointed snout, so to speak, and began the process of searching for a nesting site. She was, or at least it appeared that she was moving away from here. So, as I mentioned previously, they nest in the evening but i suspect that she's getting really close at the very least really close to nesting and this was sort of a a trial run for her all right so i've searched for an additional hour after finding that gravid female haven't located anything else noteworthy so i'm going to search in this section for a little longer and then i am going to hike back to the car which is only about 10 minutes from here I'll get some water. I am out of water currently and I am stirring up all the pollen <clears throat> walking through this underbrush. It's really getting into the back of my throat and is annoying. So a little bit more for this section and then back to the car and we'll touch base. So after retrieving water from my vehicle, I literally just walked 40 feet and look at this. And what I think we have here is a postpartum female. Postpartum females are emaciated after egg laying and a telltale sign that one is recently postpartum is an elongated flap of skin running up the side of the snake several inches above the cloacea. All right, I just set up the GoPro to get her as she departs. She does need to get going and consume a lot of toads over the next couple of months to get her weight back. All right, so we are going to leave the xeric habitat behind and explore this deciduous forest mixed with white pine. I have found a couple of hog nose exploring these woods in the past, a female and a male. But the most exciting find was stumbling upon an eastern box turtle that had just started to exit its overwintering burrow. Heard something moving. It is a American toad, aka hognose food. All right, no luck in these woods. So what we are going to do is travel over 150 miles east of here to wild Cape Cod. So 
I'm here on a week's vacation. We are gonna spend the better part of that searching for hognose snakes here on the Outer Cape. And not only did we travel 150 miles to the east, we jumped ahead in time by a month. It is now mid-July. Since females would have already have laid all of their clutches of eggs by now, we will not be targeting gravid or nesting uh, female hognose snakes. So being the height of summer, it will be more difficult to find hognose snakes. However, the Outer Cape of Massachusetts has a very large, very healthy population of eastern hognose snakes, probably the largest in New England. So we have that in our favor, and I have ample time to search for my favorite snake. Okay, for starters, we are going to search along the edges of this hiking trail. Between my sightings and other reports, it is a reliable area for Eastern Hognose on the Outer Cape. The trail itself is bordered by salt marsh, plenty of pitch pine, black oak, wild cranberry bogs, sand dunes, uh, the trail itself eventually peters out into an estuary. The numerous father's toads and puddles for them to lay their eggs alongside this trail makes it good hunting grounds for the local hognose. Well, this is a pleasant surprise to find one this quickly. I literally just started hiking 10 minutes ago. Here it is on display. Um, this is a female, and like I mentioned in the introduction, this is my favorite color and patterning here in Massachusetts. This olive uh, green or olive brown background with this gold and black checkering running the length of the snake. And this is typical of what you find here at the Outer Cape, unlike the Western Massachusetts site where most of the snakes I find are that uniform dull gray I assume this pattern right here works better for camouflage in a more of a sandy, more of an open uh, habitat. Well, as you can see, I spent too much time with her and she's decided to play dead. So this was really a lucky find so early on. Of course, now my concern is, is that for the rest of the week, I won't find anything and it will just be a long week of fruitless searching. But I guess we'll find out it certainly did feel as though my luck ended after finding that female because for the next two days, all my searching in multiple locations yielded no hognose or no snakes for that matter. I am sunburned, very dehydrated. Well, I was successful getting a very itchy poison ivy rash, but by midweek, things were about to change. Eastern hognose snakes on the Outer Cape prefer these pitch pine stands that are nestled in between large sand dunes. Now, pitch pine stands are synonymous with the Outer Cape. However, what I look for, what I find to be reliable spots, are these glades, these grassy glades that make the understory of these pitch pine stands and preferably the grass should be fairly high, like a, like a foot or so, and the dead grass, or grass that is growing, or previous year's dead grass, is dense, really wiry and dense. And I think that the hognose like to hide in this dense grass when they're not active. So, we're going to search the perimeter, or the edge, and then I'm going to work myself through every square foot of this fairly large stand, which connects to other stands. And it's about a half a mile, maybe a little bit less than half a mile in length and about 500 feet wide. So let's begin. I will start over here and work my way counterclockwise.
All right, it's been about 10 minutes. No luck so far, but the conditions are optimal. It's mostly overcast, it's not too hot. And hog knows in the summertime, especially, are active from mid-morning to early afternoon. So we're right in the middle of that time frame right now. So it's either I'm gonna find one fairly quickly or I'm gonna have another long day of not finding anything. So. All right, all right. Check this out. Ah, my luck is going to include two hognose snakes and this looks like another gorgeous female. Wow. I did spend a good amount of time filming and photographing this impressive female. She was large, approaching three feet in fact. In addition to hooding and hissing, she feigned strikes several times. And here is one captured in slow motion to really illustrate once again that they do not open their mouths during this feigned striking behavior. The spiral coil of her tail here makes for some great shots, but this is another defensive posture for hognose. It seems to distract, distress, and or confuse a predator on top of all of the other defensive theatrics that might be going on. So I thought this was interesting. This depression was only a few feet from her, and I believe it is where she had spent the previous night. Hold up. Okay, it is our last day to search for hognose, our last opportunity to potentially find another one. So we're gonna search this glade underneath the pitch pine. It's very similar to where we had found that second large female. In fact, we are only about a half a mile from that. And this is actually loosely connected to it. But this immediate area is relatively small and it should only take me about 15 to 20 minutes to search. And we will start this one by going clockwise and then I'll work the interior. Well, I thought that was a stick, but sticks don't slither along the ground like that. Look at this. We got a small hog nose here. Hooding. So naturally they, they hatch out with this instinct. This is a young snake, like I mentioned. Nice pattern. This young snake represents a new generation of hognose on Cape Cod. A generation that would have never have existed if not for the creation of Cape Cod National Seashore. The National Seashore in large part created and implemented by Massachusetts Senator John F. Kennedy and then signed into existence when he became president. This saved the hognose as well as other native seashore wildlife from the insatiable development that had already devoured most of what was once wild Cape Cod. Time flies and we're having fun. So now we're gonna head 150 miles west. one of the Western Massachusetts nesting site. And we have jumped ahead another month. It is now the middle of August. And late summer is an important time in the life history of the Eastern hognose snake here in Massachusetts and elsewhere. Why? Well, the reason, or I should say reasons, lie at my feet. Let's take a closer look. So check this out. We have hatchling hognose snakes. The highlight of the summer, 
comes near the end of it. After hatching and digging themselves free, the young are to fend for themselves and must begin searching for their first meal, such as small toads, red-backed salamanders, spring peepers, and other amphibians. Interestingly, unlike most newborn snakes here in Massachusetts, baby hognose go through their first shed shortly after hatching. Notice that unlike the adults here at this western Massachusetts population, these hatchling hognose have a well-defined pattern. All right, that is a wrap, folks. Thank you so much for joining me on my hog nose summer. If you enjoyed parts of this documentary, well, please consider liking and or subscribing. Thank you.